things just keep getting even more exciting about a potential new universal theme park and resort being built right here in the UK. Over the past few days, the Universal UK website has been updated with a 16-page PDF document with lots of information about the proposed development. This also includes a layout for the site, including lots of different infrastructure projects and so much more. Now, in this video here on Theme Park Worldwide, I'm going to take a good close look at this document and break down all the important and interesting facts that we can see in that document right here in the video. Now, before I get into that, just want to give you a bit of a recap on this project because things have been moving very quickly. It was late last year when we heard that Universal had purchased land here in the UK, just south of Bedford in Kempston Hardwick, with the intention of building a brand new Universal theme park and resort. Now, of course, the land was purchased last year. Universal revealed that information. We had the new website that was launched. And of course, since then, um, there's not been loads of new news coming out. However, it seems that behind the scenes, there's certainly been lots happening. And now here we are, April 2024, and we've got this huge document detailing lots more information. Now, it's worth also pointing out, of course, Universal still haven't fully committed and said that this is going to be happening yet. However, everything is certainly moving forward in the right direction for this very exciting new project. Let's get down into it then. Lots to talk about in this video, lots of new information, lots of images to see, and uh, I can't wait to share all this with you all. Now, all of the information that I'm going to be sharing in this video has come from the official website for the Universal UK project. And after you finish watching, I definitely recommend heading over there and having a detailed read through the 16 pages of this PDF document. It can be found at universalukproject.co.uk. Now, in this video, I'm going to pick out all the highlights and go through all the important detailed information that I could find in the document. I spent quite a while just reading through it all in detail. Um, lots to see over there, but I do appreciate that not everyone has the time to go and read through a massive document. And that's why I made this video, um, just to go through all of these different details that we can see. And uh, now it covers all sorts of things, including information on the layout of the resort, the infrastructure, and more. It also has details about two public events that are going to be taking place uh, very soon, actually, on Saturday the 13th and Tuesday the 16th of April 2024. And um, this is a chance for people to go. Um, share their feedback about the project and also look through everything that they've put out in this document. They did make it clear that no new information is going to be revealed at them two different events. However, um, of course, it's a chance to go and meet people from the project and share your feedback in person. You can also fill out an online feedback form and that closes on Friday the 3rd of May 2024. So again, only a matter of a few weeks for that. Um, so things are really Really moving very quickly with this project. Uh, now the document starts off with information about the company itself, including the five other resorts around the world, and also how this would be the first Universal resort in Europe. Uh, now, of course, Universal uh, have got some brilliant properties all around the world, and it's really exciting the fact they want to bring one here to the UK. A lot of people may be familiar with the park in Orlando. It's the one that's visited the most, especially by people here in the UK. And uh, yeah, it's an absolutely brilliant resort. I've cr currently got two theme parks, a water park, various hotels, City Walk, and building um, their third theme park at the moment as well, Epic Universe. And that just goes to show how much uh, investment Universal are putting into their expansion, um, not just in Florida, but also around the world as well. Um, so yeah, it kind of talks all about their different destinations and experiences across the world. Then it goes on to why the UK. Now, the main reasons why Universal have picked the UK to build this first European park is mainly because of a large population. Uh, along with that, creative industries was mentioned, strong tourism, the transport infrastructure, and also links to the rest of Europe. So yeah, it's quite clear that uh, Universal, they've done the research. Um, they know, of course, we've got a very heavy population here. Uh, along with that, some real strong tourism, especially um, down in London, with people coming over from all around the world to come and see everything there. Uh, and the fact that this site in Bedford isn't too far away from that, but is also um, north of London, meaning that the rest of the UK have much better connectivity to this site as well, through the fantastic transportation and infrastructure um, that they are planning to build around this resort as well. 
And it also mentioned the links to Europe. Of course, a lot of people may travel over um, with the various different airports nearby, but you've got things like Eurotunnel, you've got the ferry that you can get over. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of great connections out to the rest of Europe as well. Now, in terms of the land that was purchased, 476 acres are now owned by Universal Destinations and Experiences, and of course their owner Comcast, with the option to acquire more land if moving forwards with the project. So that's quite interesting. Um, now the land that is in question here to purchase um, and acquire is actually the piece of land that would use to connect the resort to the A421, which is the dual carriageway, and then that leads down to the M1 motorway as well. So um, it's in a really good location for that connectivity, but also the fact that you know they want to purchase this land if moving moving forward, they can acquire it, and uh, that would connect the resort to our um, road infrastructure here in the UK. And yeah, the A421 being the, the nearest major road um, to this project. But again, we'll come on to that in more detail a little bit later on. Uh, it also then goes to mention how they want to respect the site's local history. I found this quite interesting. Incorporate some of the bricks still found on the site into some of the potential buildings and then also de design select food and drink facilities and attractions with Bedford's town history in mind. I thought that was quite fascinating. Maybe that will play more into the City Walk kind of entertainment district uh, with some of the restaurants and theming they could do there, um, especially with it being very industrial. That's quite a modern kind of feel now as well. Um, so I thought that was quite fascinating about potentially using some bits that are already on the site um, and also celebrating Bedford's town history. Uh, it then goes on to economic benefits. 5,000 construction workers um, would be on site during the construction phase. 8,000 new jobs when it's operational. So in total, um, you know, over 10,000 jobs this would create, 5,000 during the construction, and then an additional 8,000 um, when operational. It talks about a UK tourism boost because of this, and that would definitely be the case with more people wanting to come over and experience this new resort from Universal, especially with it being the only one in Europe. A lot of people out in mainland Europe Europe, France, Spain, Italy, the Netherlands, uh, you know, are all going to want to come and experience this new park. So that's quite interesting. Also, it would create this big kind of uh, tourism boost um, with Disneyland Paris did, you know, back in 1992 um, in France. You know, it would be a similar kind of thing with Universal here in the UK. Now, Let's go on to the site itself. And of course, you've seen some drone shots here that I took back in January when we were last down there at the site. We was having a good look round. We got some great shots down on the ground and also in the air. So you're seeing them throughout this video that I captured earlier this year. Now, this is where it starts to get really exciting because we knew they've purchased the land, but we didn't know kind of the locations of anything on there and where exact things were going to go. This is kind of the master plan, so to speak here. And as you can see, the site will be split into four different zones. So you've got the core zone, which will be the theme park itself, hotels, and also the main car park. You then got the West Gateway Zone, which will be a road infrastructure and transportation hub um, that you can see just there. You then got the East Gateway Zone, which would be a railway station and also transportation hub. And then you've got the lake zone, which initially would be temporary construction and future development. And I'll come on to that with another image a little bit later on. Now, let's go in detail then into this master plan, because this is the first time that we've actually seen a proposed layout for the resort, the place where they want to build the actual theme park itself, the parking, the infrastructure, hotels, the city walk. This is the first time we've actually seen this. Uh, now from the master plan, TP and TPS means theme park and main resort area. And that would be built on what is currently fields. Uh, now you can see that from the aerial footage just here, uh, because you know you look at the plans and think, oh, it doesn't actually look that big of a site. When you've been there in person and seen this, you realize that is a huge area that we're looking at there for the theme park. I've been seeing various different things over the past few days online. People saying that it's a bigger site than uh, Epic Universe in Florida. Along with that, you could fit almost all of Universal Islands of Adventure, Universal Studios Florida, and City Walk into that site as well. So that gives you an idea on the size that we're looking at just here. So yeah, that's the TP and TPS area, the main theme park and resort. That's currently the fields where they want to build that. 
You then got HT and RDE. Of course, HT for hotel or hotels potentially, um, but at least one would open initially, I'd imagine, with this resort if it does go ahead. And you can see that will be right next to the theme park. Would we be looking at something similar here um, to what happened at Universal Studios in Beijing when that opened a few years ago in China? Um, that's got a hotel built above the entrance. Makes me think we could possibly see something like that. And that's also still the newest theme park at the moment built um, by Universal. So that's something we could see. Also, Epic Universe, which opens next year in Florida, has got the hotel at the back of the project. So maybe that's something we could be seeing here, you know, having this hotel as the grand kind of entrance or acting. Um, it's kind of like a berm in a way to the park and uh, kind of blocking in the outside world, so to speak. Um, then, of course, it mentions about the entertainment area. Uh, definitely would be a city walk from what we can see. And that would be great because you'd have the transportation and car parks. Then you have your hotel and city walk, then into the theme park. So it certainly seems like they're going full on with this. And throughout the document, a lot was mentioned about City Walk and not just for people visiting, um, you know, to, to visit the theme park, but just on its own as a standalone attraction. City Walk's free to access, it's restaurants, it's entertainment, um, shopping, and then bringing that all together as a free to enter area, which of course would uh, be open to anyone in the local area as well. So that was good to see. And of course, that would follow on with what Universal do at their other resorts. TH is up next, uh, Transportation Hub, and that's next um, to the, of course, that, that City Walk area um, and by the theme park itself. Uh, but also, that would be the area um, where you would see a major new exit from the A421 dual carriageway to the resorts. Now, this is on the land that they will be able to acquire if they decide to move forward with this. You can see all the road infrastructure there, this big kind of exit off the main road, uh, leading down to the car parks, to the hotels, leading on to the other parcel of land on the other side of the existing road, uh, but more about that in just a moment. You can see RS there, which is a railway station uh, with plans to build a new station um, on the existing line just there uh, and actually moving the station down from where it is and creating a brand new one that would line up um, with the transportation hub and the rest of the theme park and city walk entrance. You then got TH and CPS, which is transportation hub and flat car park. Um, so yeah, they've already said here they'll be looking at a flat car park, not a multi-story garage. And uh, that would be down the south end of the Site, um, on the same kind of area what's fields at the moment um, where the theme park will be built. Along with that, TMP is temporary construction on that initial plan. You can see that just off to the left of where the road infrastructure would be. And then you've got CPS, which is the car park surface as well. And uh, yeah, that would be um, for a main car park that would be there as well. We'd possibly be looking at maybe like an express parking or disabled with the first one by the transportation hub. And then the main car park itself down right on the southern end of the site. If we go on to the other side then, uh, you can see a brand new railway station that will be built and transportation hub. Uh, I'd say that would probably be for tr uh, coaches or buses to, to run from there down to the main entrance of this site. Now, here's another image to look at just here. Uh, and this kind of shows the, the top of the site and of course, um, you know, how things can really develop in the future. Um, because the top of the site that's down as just construction would change to MU, which is mixed use. Now, of course, that can mean anything. Hotels, a water park, another theme park, a second gate, um, all sorts. That is also a large plot of land. It doesn't look like it on the plans, but again, from the drone footage here, you can see just how big of a space that actually is um, all the way around um, at the top just there. Um, so quite a lot of space to build um, numerous things on there, potential hotels, um, or maybe even relocate the parking up to that area, because this is quite interesting. It shows um, the original flat car park that will open with the theme park if they go ahead with this project could then be theme park space. So yeah, it changes its use on there. It says it could still be a car park, but potentially theme park. So could that be a second gate or could it be expansion to the initial park? Um, very interesting to see. Now, of course, lots going on there with all them plans, but just to see the layout for this resort is so exciting. I didn't think we'd be at this stage already. And as much as we don't know the layout of the park or any of those details yet, um, just seeing the initial layout for the resort gets me so excited um, because we need all this infrastructure to make this a success and to make it happen. And the fact that all this has now gone through, we can see all this um, and you can share your feedback on it over the next few weeks is really promising to see. Now, along with that, there's a big focus 
focus on heavy landscaping around the resort and the surrounding area. That's mentioned a lot throughout this document. It sounds like the, you know there'll be a lot of new walking paths and uh, cycle routes, a lot of planting to make it look nice. Um, if you've seen the other universal parks around the world, and of course Florida, which a lot of people have been to, you'll know they have a lot of planting, a lot of palm trees, a lot of nice things around to make it look nice. Uh, I'm sure they do a lot of uh, nice planting and landscaping to make it look the part around all the roads and infrastructure. It's not just the theme part that will look nice, it's the whole surrounding area. And of course, at the moment, um, you know, it's, it's not exactly the most appealing area because, you know, of course, um, there's not really much there. You've got the old brickwork site and uh, this would completely transform it to look fantastic. Now, Let's go on to heights just here, because this was also fascinating in the document. It says the maximum height of any component would be 115 meters. That's 377 feet. So that's really interesting. It means it doesn't go, say they're gonna build something that tall straight away, but that is the maximum height that they could go to on that site. I thought that was fascinating. You know, 377 feet, that is really tall. So yeah, could that be for, uh, you know, in the future buildings or roller coasters? You know, it's very interesting how that's there. The highest occupiable floor of any building will be limited to 75 meters. That's 246 feet. Um, so again, that would possibly be for hotels and that sort of thing. Uh, maybe even theming structures. But uh, yeah, 246 feet is pretty tall. Uh, now it also says here, there's no current plans to build any structured parking. So like a multi-story. But in the future, if they did, it will be limited to 40 meters, 131 feet. So yeah, this is kind of what Universal have done for many years. When it was Universal Studios Florida, they had a big car park where City Walk uh, is now. And then, of course, Islands of Adventure was built, City Walk was built, and then they built the new parking garage further back. Uh, multi-story so they could potentially do this here in the future and if they do it would be limited to 40 meters 131 feet it also says that minimal development uh, will be permitted within the restoration areas so just going back to that overall map again you can see on the north uh, piece of land what used to be the brickworks you got all the lakes and things around there there's a huge area on the right hand side that will be restoration area uh, minimal development preserving the natural environment on there so that's really good to see and there's a lot actually that goes into the environmental aspect and I've not really mentioned it much in this video um, but you can see that in detail um, in the 16 page document but really that there's a lot about preserving uh, the area for wildlife and all that kind of stuff as well which is really good to see. Uh, now it then goes on to talk about rides and attractions at Universal theme parks around the world, um, big focus on City Walk and also the hotels and more in environmental information. Of course it does state that they haven't decided yet which rides, which areas and that sort of thing would come to this. Of course, we all know that probably behind the scenes, they've got a good idea what they want to build, but they don't want to share that yet until they're fully committed and say that this project will be happening. Then, of course, you've got transportation um, to the site. Um, that's mentioned a lot here. And the initial studies show that around 35 to 40% of visitors would travel to Universal Studios Great Britain by train. And that would be the two train stations, uh, one of them relocated and new and then a brand new one as well. 35% uh, of visitors would be in cars, around 10% actually drive in, um, and then the rest there would be um, people who are traveling in the vehicles as passengers. Uh, and then the rest would be via buses, taxis, and other modes of transport. There is a mention about uh, a lot of electric charging being built as part of the car park. And we've actually got information on the, on the car park itself, 4,200 spaces um, they'd be looking to build initially for this project. Big things to help with the local infrastructure. Construction of Wixom's railway station, which is the brand new station that would be built at that other gateway. And then, of course, they'd shuttle people down, probably by a bus, to the main entrance to the park. Uh, and then construction of the new railway line on the east-west line close to the resort as well, which would be direct into the resort. You'd head straight through City Walk and into the theme park just there. Uh, and then the actual road infrastructure. Dedicated slip roads from the A421 which we can see on that land that they would be able to acquire. Um, so you'd be straight off that dual carriageway into the resort, which is great for minimal traffic on the smaller roads. And then upgrades to the existing Manor Road, including a new railway bridge. Kind of at the back of the theme park, but the center of the resort. And uh, I'm sure that would be uh, completely relayed and landscaped and look really pretty like it's actually part of the resort itself. No mention on the properties that are on Manor Road at the moment. Uh, but of course, there is some existing properties that are currently on that 
that site, but they wouldn't be in the way of anything that Universal are looking at building here. However, I would be surprised if they stay there. Maybe there's some sort of compulsory purchase order goes in or something along them lines, with it being a major infrastructure project for the UK, but no mention of that yet. And like I say, there is only a few properties there on the existing Manor Road. Um, and then finally, let's talk about dates, shall we? Phased construction, um, five to six years of uh, construction, it seems, um, to build this, which of course is quite realistic for a brand new resort like this that's currently not developed at all. A lot of infrastructure to go in, you know, before you even start thinking about rides and dark rides and that sort of stuff, you've got to think about the ground, you know, and foundations. Um, you got to think of electricity, plumbing, all that kind of stuff. Road infrastructure that will need to go in first. There's a lot to do here, um, but five to six years, I think, is quite realistic for that. The workforce would peak in year three of that five to six year construction with up to 5,000 workers on site. Now, uh, a lot of rumors are suggesting that Universal would maybe want to start construction on this late 2025, so possibly in about a year and a half from now with the intention of opening in 2030 uh, and with the latest of 2031. So realistically, this isn't too far in the distance. This is moving a lot f closer forward than any of us were expecting. And I think as well, um, we've seen all this within a few months and this is realistic we're not seeing unrealistic concept arts and things you know which we had for the proposed London resorts you know when that was proposed like 12 years ago now and it never moved forward all we were seeing with that was uh, all these different plans and concepts art for roller coasters and that sort of thing we never saw anything as detailed as what we're seeing just here for this project um, which certainly shows this is universal you know that they've only got five properties around the world they want to build this sixth one in, in the UK uh, and that they're clear that with what they want to do moving forward which I think is really exciting so to a lot of people who've been saying, oh, yeah, I'll believe it when I see it and that sort of thing. Yes, it's not confirmed yet, but I don't think Universal would have purchased the land and gone forward with all of this if they didn't have the intention of building this. I think it's going to happen. I'm very positive about this. This isn't the London Resort now. This is Universal. They've got established parks and resorts around the world and they really want to come into the European market. Well, there we go. So much new information and details about this potential new Universal theme park and resort coming here to the UK. And it doesn't sound like it's going to be too long until Universal have made their decision on whether they're going to be going forward with this project or not. Things are all looking very positive. We've hardly seen any negatives from this at all. And the moving forward, the working with local councillors, the government are involved. I honestly feel like this is going to move forward and it's going to happen. And it's going to be absolutely amazing for the UK. UK. It really is. It'll be a great tourism boost, be brilliant for the economy, creating all them jobs. 5,000 during construction, up to 8,000 jobs when it's open, with the intention of that growing even more with future expansions. And then you think about the amount of awesome rides we could get at this park. It will be an incredible resort from what we can see. And Universal um, have been expanding with their new parks around the world. Beijing a few years ago, Epic Universe currently under construction. And in a few years time, we could be filming construction updates here on Theme Park Worldwide from Universal Studios Great Britain. It's so exciting. I cannot contain my excitement. Like honestly, just talking about this, massive smile on my face. I never thought we'd be talking about something like this in the UK. But here we are, it's April 2024. Uh, let's see what happens moving forwards. And of course, I would love to know all of your thoughts on this information down below in the video comments. And like I say, head over to that official website and read through the document because there's a lot more there, especially when it comes to um, like the economical impacts and all that kind of stuff. Uh, go and have a good read into it all and you'll see basically what they've got planned um, you know, to make this this beautiful resort, helping the local area out and just making it this amazing place for everyone to experience. But uh, thanks for joining us here on Theme Park Worldwide. And of course, that leaves me with one final thing to say. Get out there and keep on riding. See you in the next video.